Hello everyone this is part 12 of what if Naruto was neglected and was trained by Shisui, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. TCH, how weak can you be to not even gather any information? Naruto snapped his head towards Narumi and he swore for a second, all he could see was red. Naruto had felt rage bubble up in him, unparalleled to any anger he had ever felt before in his life. Naruto barely registered Kurenai's worried gaze and looked at him as she scolded the lone chunin in the room. Kurenai put her soft hand onto Naruto's shoulder as she yelled at Narumi, she herself was beginning to get annoyed at the chunin, and if it wasn't for Naruto telling her to let her do her thing, she would have returned to Kanoa and request a new teammate immediately. Naruto didn't even bother to look over at Kurenai, he only had his eyes set onto Narumi's aggressive smirk as hers eyes glossed over with confidence. It had taken everything in Naruto's power to not activate his Sharingan and glare daggers at the girl, his very own sister as she called him out in front of Kurenai. Naruto growled, all sound muffled around him and not even the calming words of Isabu had yet to reach him. His hands balled themselves into fists as he took a step forward and he grew madder as Narumi's smirk only grew. What? Does the weakling finally want that spa? Naruto? Eyes flashed dangerously, and this time Isabu had to forcefully interject himself, he was screaming at the blonde to stop and calm down. Naruto barely heeded his words, he could tolerate his family leaving him behind, he could live with the idea of them not in his life. But no one, absolutely no one would call him weak in front of Kurenai, anyone but her. Narumi's eyes glinted as she watched her brother get closer to her, her hand was already trembling slightly with excitement as she slowly reached into her pouch fingering around for a kunai. That is enough. Narumi I had accepted your attitude long enough. If you don't back off right away I will be forced to make you. Kurenai yelled, stepping in front of Naruto surprising both the Namikazes. At the gesture Naruto was finally able to make out what Isabu had been yelling at him. The calming words finally reached Naruto's brain and he took a few large and silent breaths. Narumi, seeing Kurenai intervene scowled, she took her hand out of her pouch and almost glared at the two of them. She kicked off the wall she was leaning against and offered a half-ass apology and left the room, disappointed that her plan had failed. It only was that Kurenai hadn't got in the middle, then finally she would see how strong her brother actually was. With another loud scowl she slammed the door shut and left the room entirely, leaving both Naruto and Kurenai alone. An awkward silence bathed through the bedroom as Kurenai turned back to Naruto who was standing at the foot of the bed. Arms limp at his sides as he looked at her with a mixture of shock and annoyance. The red-eyed beauty ignored the look as she bent down to his level, her hand reaching out impulsively and laid itself on his cheek. Naruto wanted to snap away from her touch but he couldn't, he felt cemented in place as he felt her thumb start to gently rub the bottom of his scar. Naruto's fists tightened at his sides, looking away from Kurenai as he scoffed. You didn't have to do that, I had it under control. You don't have to lie to me Naruto-kun. It's okay. She said softly, leaning forward until her forehead rested against his. Naruto felt his breathing hitch in his throat and his body froze as Kurenai's hot breath tickled his cheek. He was annoyed, he was angry at Narumi, he was angry at everybody. And yet, whenever Kurenai was here, the ice around his heart melted away, and he found himself happy again. He stood still for several moments, enjoying the warmth from Kurenai and he hesitantly gave in. Leaning into her touch and putting more of his weight onto her. She didn't seem to mind as they stood in the center of the room in complete silence, both not bothering to talk as they enjoyed the peaceful nature of things. Naruto felt his cheeks start to heat up as what sounded like an angel reached his ears. He perked his eyes up at the sound, coming face to face with Kurenai, her eyes were closed shut as the angelic melody of laughter played on her pillowy lips. Naruto like before had forgotten how to breath in that very instant, he couldn't take his eyes off of her as she laughed louder, small tears falling down her perfectly pale cheeks. The words flowed from her mouth like a harp, so pure and pleasing to the ear. 
He felt himself get drawn to her very presence and Naruto was sure that at that moment, her smile had been the most beautiful thing that ever existed, and nothing could ever surpass it. I guess we should have traded her out for someone else, huh? Naruto felt himself groan as his eyes started to flutter open. His head was pounding against his skull and he reached up and rubbed his temple in hopes to ease the pain. He blinked a few times to adjust his eyesight as he looked up into the dull grey ceiling over his head. He could hear the faint signs of people talking, but he wasn't fully awake yet and it just sounded like a muffled mess as he used his arm and pushed himself up. His hand made contact with the soft cushion of a couch as he pulled himself up, rubbing the remains of sleep from his eyes as he titled his head to the side earning a sickening crack. Naruto sighed happily at the feeling, he was beginning to feel his body loosening up as the muttering had stopped completely as the occupants in the room looked over at the now awake boy. Ah it seems you're finally awake Naruto. Naruto blinked at being addressed at random, he turned his head to the sound of the voice to see the three people sitting comfortably at a large circular table. Suddenly the memories flooded back into Naruto like a tidal wave as he looked over to the grey-haired man who had just spoken to him. Taking a moment to gather his thoughts as he remembered everything, his battle with that Atarashi member, using his Mangeku Sharingan and Isabu's chakra to deal a devastating blow to the man. Mulling over his thoughts Naruto felt his eyes narrow suspiciously as he looked the man up and down. Shouldn't you be injured? Oh me, you managed to break my arm but it's already fully healed. Naruto felt his eyes widen as Yuno waved his arm casually, grinning as he did so. The blonde's mouth fell open in shock, Yuno managed to take a Bayou Chakra punch to the stomach and left the fight with only a broken arm. He had no other injuries as he sat comfortable in his chair without a care in the world. Naruto was stunned, just how strong was Yuno? A normal person shouldn't have been able to even walk for about a week after feeling such an attack. Naruto shook his head as he thought about Yuno's strength, he was sure he had only seen a fraction of it and that thought alone was terrifying. Naruto was broken out of his thoughts as Keys yelled to him, bouncing up and down at her own seat at the table as she patted on the one next to her. Naruto smiled and quickly swung his legs off of the couch and made his way towards the free chair next to the lone girl. After taking a seat Keys smiled up at him, scooting her chair closer so their shoulders were touching. Naruto chuckled a bit and looked across the table. Yuno was seated comfortably next to Sasori who was swirling the remembrance of his tea in his tiny cup. The redhead looked bored, his chestnut eyes duller than usual as they glanced at the blonde. Naruto only blinked in confusion, and grew even more confused as Yuno laughed slightly. You have been unconscious for about two hours, I was starting to get bored waiting. Naruto just sweet dropped at Sasori's words. Sometimes Naruto just couldn't get a good read on the puppet master. At one moment the redhead was almost playful, acting like an excited kid on Christmas Day, then the next he was brooding and bored, like he had just watched all of his presents get taken away from him and lost interest. It was confusing. Naruto just shook his head as Sasori downed the rest of his beverage, he grumbled slightly as he left the table without a word and made his way back into the kitchen. Naruto watched him bemused and was brought back to reality as Yuno had started to speak. Sasori can be interesting at times, but under that tough exterior of his he is quite the prankster. Keys giggled at Yuno's words as she leaned against the table, nodding her head vigorously, yeah. Sasori sensei had even shown me his puppet collection. He had a lot of very cute. Let me remind you that you had almost destroyed some of those. Sasori said angrily as he returned to his seat with a full cup of tea. He glared at Keys making the girl stop her rambling. Keys pouted and crossed her arms with a huff, mumbling to herself as Naruto and Yuno laughed at the display. Naruto rubbed the girl's head and her attitude did a quick 180 as she smiled up happily at the blonde. Now that Naruto is awake we can finally get down to business. Naruto looked over at Yuno, his hand still playing with Kiss's brown locks as he raised an eyebrow. Naruto took notice of Sasori straightening up his back and as his eyes turned serious. Naruto nodded his head, acknowledging Yuno's words as he swallowed hard. He was starting to become a little nervous at finally being able to hear what he was waiting for all this time. Yuno smiled as he interlocked his fingers together, covering his mouth as he looked between Naruto and Keys. Now, what do the two of you know about our group? That you guys call yourself Atarashi and have a blue wave on the cloaks you guys wear. Yuno nodded as he reached down onto the floor, 
picking up his neatly folded cloak and placing it onto the table. He pushed it closer to Naruto and the blonde examined the cloak. It was a dark blue in color and the wave on the front was a nice light blue. It was long, possibly going all the way down to Yuno's legs and would easily slide off of Naruto and Keys. Naruto felt Keys grab a hold of the article of clothing as she pulled it closer to herself. Naruto just looked back at Yuno with a questioning gaze as the girl next to him was amazed at the soft material of the cloak. Yes, our group Atarashi is a counter force against a terrorist group who call themselves the Akatsuki. The Akatsuki are a group of S-class missing nin from all the major villages, and they are a force to be reckoned with. Yuno said, making Naruto's eyes go wide. Just the thought alone of such power shinobi all under the same leader was intimidating. Naruto had barely come out of most of his fights alive and couldn't imagine what a fight against an S-class shinobi would be like. Sure he was much stronger now, stronger than he had ever felt before in his life. He just wished he didn't have to fight an S-class shinobi soon. The Akatsuki aren't just a normal terrorist group though. The goal, capture and obtain all nine-tailed beasts and use them to take over the world. Naruto felt his blood run cold. Even Kiz had froze as she looked up at Yuno in shock. Kiz's hand reached out instinctively and balled itself around Naruto's sleeve desperately, her golden eyes looked at Naruto in apparent worry as her grip tightened. Naruto himself was in a deeper state of shock, he was stunned into silence at the mere thought of the possibility. Even Isabu had fallen silent, the giant turtle's lone eye looked down at his reflection in the water, grief overtaking him at the thought of any of his siblings being held captive from these criminals. And they are already in possession of five of the nine-tailed beasts. At Yuno's words the room turned tense. Even Sasori seemed unnerved, his tea was untouched as his hand tightened around the cup. The room was so silent you could hear a pin drop from any of the adjacent rooms in the frown as the words left his mouth, looking down as his fists balled themselves into fists. His nails digging deep into his palms as a small trickle of blood fell down onto the table. Naruto felt Keys try and get closer to him as he spoke. B but didn't you say you were a counter force? H how did they? Naruto's voice trailed off as he noticed the solemn looks appear on the two adults' faces. It was the first time either Naruto and Keys had seen such a look of sadness strike Sasori, the redhead's grip was so strong cracks started to appear in his cup. Yuno felt his frown fall deeper as he placed his hand on Sasori's now slumped shoulder. Yes. Dot but the Akatsuki were much stronger than we had originally thought. We had lost almost all of our members. Our leader, Sasori, Itsumi, Akira, and myself are the only remaining members of Atarashi. The other 100 had all been killed. Yuno said angrily, he sometimes still couldn't believe that the Akatsuki managed to kill almost all of their members. They were bloodthirsty monsters who didn't belong to this world. He made a vow to himself to kill every last Akatsuki member to bring peace to the shinobi world and avenge the friends and family he had made within the group. And he would do it, no matter what it took. Naruto was once again stunned into silence, 100 members gone just like that. All killed for the greater good of the world, seemingly all for nothing since the group was still closing the gap with reaching the goal. But we managed to get an upper hand as we managed to get away with the Sanbi before the Akatsuki could. We were there when the Jinchuriki was about to die and he was okay with us taking away the Sanbi before they could. So I was able to sneak away with the Bayou in an urn that I carried around for a few months. Before I had met you Naruto. Naruto scowled, his Sharingan flaring to life as it glared at Yuno. He felt like his body was shaking, things were starting to sound like they were getting worse by the second. Naruto slammed his hands on the table angrily making Keys jump in surprise. Isabu had to do everything in his power to hold back his chakra as Naruto snapped. Naruto growled. You. I'm in this mess all because of you. Why did you have to seal Isabu into me? I didn't ask for this power, you involved me in a battle I was never supposed to be attending. Yuno stayed still as beads of spit landed on his face from Naruto's outburst. He remained completely unfaced and nodded his head. Yes. On the day I found you I was struck with the idea to seal the Sanbi into you. You were a Namikas, a direct descendant to the Yondime Hokage so you were born with talent. No one would have ever expected you to hold the Sanbi, and when Shisui had offered his Sharingan up to you it had only made the choice even easier. 
Out of everybody in the world, you were the only one I could see who could not only master this power, but keep it hidden from the Akatsuki. Yuno said, shutting Naruto up. Yuno continued, furthering his point. In a short amount of time you had already almost mastered a Mangeku Sharingan ability, and even mastered a single tail of the Sanbi. With training I knew you would become a fine shinobi. Naruto went silent, feeling his heart beat quicken as he fell back into his chair processing what Yuno had said. He didn't know what he thought about the situation as he closed his eyes in irritation, on one hand he was glad he had met Isabu. Because of the demon he was able to get much further in his shinobi career and had stopped Naruto from making many bad decisions time and time again. But now with the knowledge of the Akatsuki out there, everything has changed. Naruto would no doubt have to come into contact with an Akatsuki member and fight for his life, and if he had lost then it meant more than just losing his life, no, it put the whole world in jeopardy. His death could very much be the catalyst to the world ending. And Narumi and Natsu. At that thought he grew even more annoyed. They were both Jinjiriki of the Kyuubi. He had no attachment to them as a family. Like he had told Narumi they are strangers from here on out, and most likely forever will be. But that doesn't mean he wants them to die, and they were publicly known as Jinjiriki throughout the elemental nations. And being the kids of one of the strongest Hokage in history painted a big target on their backs that they would probably never outgrow. Looking back up at Yuno he narrowed his eyes, his Sharingan now into his new Mangeku state as he stared at the Atarashi member. And I'm assuming you want me to join this group of yours. Yuno smiled, Naruto was smarter than he originally thought. He nodded his head. Indeed, I have wanted to recruit you and Keys into Atarashi since I believe with you two we could finally put an end to the Akatsuki once and for all. And what makes you think I would join willingly? And I am damn well not allowing Keys to be brought into this way of life. I would rather die than let anything happen to her. Naruto said confidently, his eyes never wavering off of Yuno as Keys gasped slightly, even Sasori seemed surprised at the blonde. Running his hand through his red hair as he watched Keys look at Naruto with a huge amount of worry. Keys tightened her grip on his sleeve, pulling herself closer to the blonde. Naruto lost his serious look as he looked down at Keys in worry. He asked what was wrong and Keys shook her head violently. N no. I can't just do nothing while a group goes after you Naru ni. I couldn't live with myself if they managed to take you away from me. T that's why I won't let you leave without me and I can fight with you. All the people present felt their eyes widen and Naruto looked down at Keys in shock. Keys buried herself deeper into his chest as Naruto wrapped his arms around the girl, a few tears falling out of his eyes as he held her tightly. He whispered in her ear that he wouldn't go anywhere and he would always be here for her. The two Atarashi members watched the scene play out in front of them rather fondly. Especially Sasori, he would never admit it, but he had started to care for the two kids more than he had thought he would. They helped fill the void in his empty heart as more and more of his Atarashi members had passed away, they had reminded him how good it felt to be himself. He smiled at the display, those two really did care for each other. Perhaps Yuno was right on making the call to have Naruto take her all the way here. You know Naruto, at the end of the day it is still your choice to join us. I will not force you, but I do believe that you two could help change the shinobi world for the better. Naruto peeked over at Yuno, he rubbed Kiss's back soothingly as he pondered what Yuno had said. He already had the power sealed inside of him, not going with the group wouldn't benefit anyone in the long run. If he didn't go then he could perhaps keep Isabu a secret for a little while longer, and hell, it was already outstanding that he had managed to keep his Sharingan and blood style a secret for so long. Naruto had expected that Narumi would have jumped at the chance to make his powers known to the world as soon as she returned to Kanoa. But that wasn't the case, he had appeared in the bingo book under a regular capture order. The entry had no info about his powers and in his opinion, he really didn't care about hiding them anymore. He was proficient in them well enough to not really care about the secret. But it was a welcome surprise. But if he did think about joining Atarashi, it would be just another way to become powerful enough to protect those close to him. Like he had said before, he would rather die than let anything happen to Keys, and that also went for his friends back in Kanoa, and Kuranai. He pondered the idea some more, letting it soak in his brain as his eyes wandered between the two Atarashi members. The longer he thought about it the more clear the answer became for the blonde boy. 
but he wouldn't give in so easily like he had done in the past. He was different than he used to be. He had a purpose now, people to protect and that meant more to him than his life. He was done getting pushed around. Itsumi had played him like a damn fiddle and he was not about to follow the Pied Piper again. I will think about joining your group, but on one condition. Yuno kept his face blank as he stared at Naruto. He traced his finger against the mahogany table as he nodded. He was curious about what Naruto had wanted from them but he was eager to hear the boy out. So Yuno nodded his head. Naruto thought about what he wanted to say, he knew he was already promised this but it was a way of cementing the information into stone, like he said, he was done being played with. And knowing slightly how Atarashi worked and thought, by normal means his question would have gone unanswered like before. I want to know who killed Shisui Nisan. I want to know everything about that day, down to the last detail. And I want your word, Kiss's safety is my number one priority. I will no doubt leave anyone if it means I can save her. After I hear everything, then I will make my decision. Yuno smiled, leaning forward as he interlocked his fingers again. He ignored Sasori's flabbergasted expression and nodded his head at Naruto. Naruto felt like a weight got lifted off his body as Yuno gave his acknowledgement to his demand. It was far-fetched, but it helped seal away any doubts Naruto was having about the group, so far Naruto only trusted Sasori out of the three Atarashi members he had met. He hated Itsumi more than anything for what he said he would do to Kurenai, and Yuno had burdened him with a power that was getting chased down. Forcing him into a war he wasn't prepared for. Very well then, Yuno said, scooting closer to the table as all present stared at him in anticipation, but no one more than Naruto. Naruto was dead silent, he was finally getting what he was waiting for, what had been plaguing his mind since he had got here. He could feel his breath hitch as he watched Yuno's mouth open up, his palms had started to sweat and he wasn't sure if Isabu's calming jutsu would have any effect on him at the moment. His name is Danzo. Danzo Shimura is a figurehead on the Kanoa Council, he is the one who had killed Shisui Uchiha. Naruto remained silent as he stared at Yuno and everything around him seemed to fade away into nothingness. Finally, finally after all these years he had a name for the faceless man who killed his Nissan. He felt his heartbeat quicken and his blood turn hot at the mere mention of his name. Danzo Shimura, Naruto muttered angrily, his dujutsu spinning widely in his socket. Yuno nodded his head. Yes, sadly I do not know all the details of that night that had caused Danzo to kill Shisui, but I was in Kanoa doing some business when I had seen you Naruto, sneaking out of your bedroom window and running towards the Uchiha district. I had trailed you out of pure curiosity, until Danzo had sliced your eye open. I was quick to intervene after that, saving you and Shisui, but Shisui had already lost too much blood and his right Sharingan eye had already been gouged out. Danzo took his Sharingan, Shisui's Sharingan, and killed Nisan. Naruto mumbled out, his words sounded more like a ghost of a whisper as they flew from his lips. His blood was burning with such intensity he felt like he was going to pass out from the feeling. His nails dug themselves into his palms, drawing small trickles of blood to seep down to his knuckles. His Sharingan eye was wide and all he could see was the final memory he had of Shisui, the smiling boy that had done everything for him, who had helped him when no one else did. Naruto stood up abruptly from his chair surprising everyone but Yuno as he walked towards the door. Kis called out after him, asking him what the problem was as she jumped out of her own seat to follow him. Kis stopped dead in her tracks as Naruto's body exploded into a vile red chakra cloak. Naruto's multicolored eyes stared at Keys, a look of pure anger coursed through him as his enlarged nails tried their very best to pierce the cloak around him. I'm going to go after Danzo and make him pay. It's his fault Shui Nisan is dead, and it's his fault the Uchiha clan were wiped out. Naruto said darkly, the last part of that was more of a hunch on Naruto's part. But it was the only reasonable explanation that had presented itself as to why Danzo, a member of the council, had wanted the Uchiha clan gone. I very much advise at least leaving tomorrow then. Give you time to cool down and think about what you are doing, what this means. This time Sasori spoke up, standing up from his chair and putting his hand in his chest. His chestnut eyes glossed over with a small shred of worry before it vanished completely. Naruto just looked over at the puppet master annoyed. I think that's for the best Naruto, and I had a few techniques I still needed to show Keys and I can get her ready for tomorrow. 
Naruto shook his head at Sasori's words as he glanced over at Keys. His chakra cloak had started to recede back into his seal but his previous anger still very much remained without the chakra. Blinking the gold away in his eye he spoke, I don't want Keys to come with me, something can happen. I already said I'm not leaving you Naru ni. Either I go with you, or you're not going at all. Keys said confidently, her own golden eyes never faltering as she stared right back at her Naru ni. She was going to be stubborn about this, she had already lost one brother who had gone insane, and she was not going to lose another one. Naruto wanted to scowl at her words but he couldn't bring himself to do so. Yuno's face was the only one not showing any signs of emotions as he looked at Naruto, trying to get a read on his own inner conflict. The room was silent as they awaited Naruto's answer, almost too silent that Keys had started to fidget slightly in place. Naruto sighed before deactivating his dujutsu, turning his back to the rest of them as he placed his hand back onto Kiss's head and softly brushed her soft brown locks to the side. Sasori let out a breath he didn't know he was holding and Yuno just smiled. Fine, but tomorrow, we make our way to Kanoa. The next day. 6. A. M. You're progressing well keys, Sasori said, wiping a thick gleam of sweat from his brow as he turned his head back to the adorable brown-headed girl. The next words had all but died in the Atarashi member's throat as he looked at Keys. A deep frown was etched into her face as her hand mindlessly controlled a puppet, making it run from side to side with a faraway look in her eyes. Sasori wanted to sigh at the expression on the girl, she had been like that since they had started training and it looked like it wasn't going away any time soon. While she was still heading all of his instructions and following the training regimen, her mind was most definitely elsewhere. Keys, what's on your mind? You look distracted, Sasori said as he took a seat next to the unmoving Keys. Keys looked up at the redhead besides her and her frown only deepened. She put the hand down that was controlling the puppet and sighed. The puppet was still active as it curled itself around Keys as she rested her head in her palm, her eyes slowly shifted from Sasori and back to the large mountain that their base was hidden within. Her free hand mindlessly playing with a few strands of grass beneath her fingertips as they sat out in the forest next to the cabin. I'm just, I'm worried about Naruni. He was acting kinda scary last night after he found out who killed Shisui Gigi. And I just don't want him to do something he would regret. Sasori's eyes softened and he slowly nodded his head along with her, leaving back and raising his head to look up into the endless blue sky. There wasn't a single cloud that blemished the beauty and Sasori silently marveled at the scene. He gently patted Keys on the head. I know what you mean kid, but this means a lot to him. I know, I'm just a little worried. Sasori chuckled as he shook her brown hair a little more. Keys stifled a giggle as she tried to push the older man's hand away. Sasori just chuckled at the scene, he sometimes forgets that Keys was only about nine years old. She acted much older than she let on and had an air of maturity that she kept up for most of her life. Of course she still acted like a kid, but it was little moments like these that always surprised Sasori and he wasn't sure if he could get fully used to it. Well that's why you're going with him right. To make sure that blonde idiot doesn't do anything stupid. Keys giggled again and smiled at Sasori. Her smile suddenly turned mischievous as the puppet around her clicked rapidly. Sasori then yelped out in surprise, looking down to see the little boy puppet that had wrapped itself around Keys had its mouth open and was biting down hard on one of his fingers. Sasori felt his eye twitch before glaring at the young girl, Keys just laughed it off as she took off running back to the cabin. Sasori yelled after her as he held his sore finger, he silently cursed to himself as he quickly caught up to Keys who was giggling furiously. He swore he would never get used to a puppet that acted on its own, but at least she made good enough progress that she made no indication of even controlling the metallic boy. Sasori quickly grabbed the girl by the collar and picked her up. Keys didn't even try to fight back as he did so, too busy laughing as she looked up into the sky. Sasori was about to scold the girl, but the second he opened his mouth he noticed that the Keys wasn't even looking at him. Blinking in surprise as a sudden core echoed into the early morning air. He raised his eyebrow and quickly asked Keys what was wrong and was even more confused as the girl kept her gaze into the sky, her golden eyes tracing something as a small shadow obscured most of his face. Naruni once told me that Shisui Gigi would often get distracted when crows circle around them. Sasori felt his whole body freeze over at Kiss's words. 
he hesitantly raised his head upwards, squinting his eyes a bit as the glaring sun almost blinded his vision completely. Just as he finally adjusted he felt them grow wide, his blood ran cold in his veins as Kiss's words echoed in his mind. She was right, there were about six crows cawing loudly as they flew aimlessly above their heads in the empty sky. Sasori put Keys down in a flash, almost disorientating her at his speed. Keys was about to ask what the matter was when Sasori quickly spun on his heel looking back into the forest they had just run out of. Keys watched in confusion while Sasori was trying his best not to sweat, internally he was trying to calm his beating heart. There is no way, how could? His thoughts were cut off as his breath hitched in his throat, he heard Keys gasp next to him as they watched a black silhouette slowly make their way towards them. Sasori felt his body stiffen as he took several breaths to calm himself down, he reached behind him taking the large scroll on his back and swinging it open. The footsteps only grew as the mysterious figure got closer to them and stood right under the glaring sun. Keys grabbed the cloth of Sasori's pants as the figure finally stopped its trek towards them. Sasori slammed his open palm into the scroll as a tall human-like puppet exploded from the scroll with a puff. The puppet looked to be a man who stood just about six feet tall with short arms as it floated above the ground already connected to Sasori's chakra strings. Sasori and Keys looked forward at the man standing across from them, he was tall, taller than Sasori as one of his arms rested just outside the zipper in his coat. His pure black cloak swayed in the wind as the top half of the cloak covered his lower face from view. He had a scratched out Kanoa headband over his forehead as his long black bangs parted in the center and framed his handsome face. Sasori pushed his arm out to shield Keys from the man, and she gasped loudly as the deep red clouds finally became visible to her. Don't look into his eyes Keys. She quickly nodded, fighting the urge to suddenly look into the stranger's eyes before forcing her head to the side. Sasori didn't have any time to let out a sigh of relief as he looked at the familiar man in front of him. He took a quick step forward to get in front of Keys as he looked towards the man, making sure he didn't look into the glaring red tomo spinning in his sockets. What the hell are you doing here Itachi? Sasori said, making it sound much less like than a question as he glared as the now dubbed Itachi stood menacingly in front of the two. This wasn't good, if a member of the Aktorki had finally found him then things could quickly turn terrible. The breeze offered a much-needed catalyst for Sasori as it helped calm his growing nerves, out of almost everyone in the Akatsuki, Itachi was the one he feared fighting the most. And if Itachi was here then, where is your partner? Sasori said as his eyes flickered around the forest. Itachi kept his face stoic as he kept his eyes trained on Sasori, his Sharingan slowly going back and forth between the redhead and the mysterious girl with him. She didn't look familiar to the older Uchiha, in fact he had never seen her before in his entire life. But she seemed important to Sasori, judging by the fact that he thrusted himself between the two of them. Atachi barely registered what Sasori had said since he was too into his inner musing, he had never known that the puppet master actually cared for other people. Kissim is here, but he has another mission. Atachi said as he pointed to the tall mountain next to them. Sasori felt his heart sink as he followed his finger, Keys wasn't much better as she actually gasped in terror. The second all eyes made contact with the mountain as small explosions reached their ears, then several rocks started to fall down the mountain followed by a thin player of smoke. En Naru ni. Keys yelled as she quickly escaped from Sasori's tight grip on her, she didn't hear Sasori call out for her to stop as she ran forward. Her whole body was jumpy as fear flowed itself through her veins. She didn't get very far as Itachi was quickly in front of her, she didn't have enough time to react as the older man tightly slapped his hand over her mouth and swapped her legs sending her crashing into the ground. Sasori called out to her again as he twitched his fingers and sent his puppet soaring towards Itachi. The Uchiha didn't even bother to move as he watched the puppet's arm shoot itself forward, a small tube became visible and Itachi didn't seem phased as he gripped Kiss's long brown hair tightly and held her in front of him. Sasori grunted at the cowardly way to not get hit by the attack, with another flick of his finger the puppet did a barely roll swinging a blade out of its arm as it attempted to cut Itachi. The Uchiha was too quick though, he threw keys to the side as he placed his palm on the ground and jumped over the blade that swung at him. Before the puppet could even act again Itachi took off towards keys, his eyes wide as the young girl snapped her head up and raised her hand outwards.
The moment she looked up however she briefly caught the spinning Tomo in his eyes as her arms slumped back down, her eyes rolling backwards as she fell to the ground unconscious. Atachi didn't even bother to catch her falling body as she hit the ground with a thud. Sasori growled, commending his puppet back to his side as the two men stared at one another. Atachi just looked at Sasori with a blank expression, one the redhead returned. But internally the Uchiha was confused, he wasn't aware the puppet master had a secret life that they were all unaware of. It was quite concerning for Atachi to learn this way, which is mainly why he had sent his partner to the base without him. Atachi silently mused again at the look of irritation that flashed in Sasori's eyes, he had never seen that expression ever in Sasori. It seems you are a traitor Sasori, what a shame, the Akatsuki really benefited your membership. Sasori growled again at the man's comment, his free hand tightened into a fist as his eyes glanced between Keys and the mountain. He didn't know what Naruto was up to, Keys and him left pretty early in the morning and Naruto was still asleep when they left. Keys seemed fine, it didn't look like Itachi had used one of his psych-altering genjutsu and looked relatively okay. Yet he was worried, he wasn't expecting to be found, at least not this early. He silently bristled at Itachi's comment, yes he was a member of the Akatsuki, key word was. Yuno had found him before the Akaktuski had and the only reason he joined with the criminal organization was because of Itachi. Clenching his fists tighter he clicked his tongue. Yeah well it seems you're going to have to go along without me. That damned group is nothing but monsters. Atachi quickly wiped his face of any surprise that might have leaked through into his expression. That, certainly wasn't what he was expecting. Atachi states stoic as Sasori's eyes periodically glanced back to the mountain. There was someone important in there, Atachi silently thought to himself. Sasori looked worried, more worried than he had ever seen the man, and that was saying a lot since he had only seen the redhead act seriously. I see, then I'm sorry Sasori, but you will have to die here. TCK, I'll like to see you try. With Naruto, before the attack. Naruto woke up with a jolt, his body felt like it was on fire as sweat poured itself down his brow. His breathing was heavy and erratic as he tried his best to calm his rapidly beating heart. His hand flew over his chest and gripped tightly around the fabric of his clothes as he tried to desperately grab his heart. His little episode didn't last long as he felt his body start to calm down as the familiar heat of Isabu's chakra entered through his coils. He breathed a sigh of relief as he lowered his hand from his chest and back onto his bedsheets. He thanked the demon, and after a few seconds he swung out of bed and walked into his connecting bathroom. Once he entered the restroom he quickly paced by his reflection in the mirror, he did a double take as he looked at himself. He raised one of his hands and rested it just under his left eye, feeling moistness as a few silent tears fell from his scarred eye. I'm crying. You had a partially bad nightmare last night Naruto. Naruto was shocked at Isabu's words, a nightmare. He didn't even remember dreaming last night, let alone having a full-blown nightmare. But it explained his strange awakening today, it had been a while since he had woken up in a cold sweat, and even longer than he remembered waking up crying. What was it about? Naruto was surprised at Isabu's lack of response, it was concerning slightly to the blonde but he didn't press the issue. Isabu on the other hand was still in a small state of shock and he was barely even remembered to help calm Naruto down. The nightmare, it was the worst the blonde had ever had and was happy that Naruto didn't have any memory of it. So he decided to stay silent, it was something he wouldn't repeat to Naruto. For how much he loved Keys and longed for Kurenai, it would only break his heart of what he dreamed of. It didn't take long for Naruto to finish getting ready, no longer than 10 minutes Naruto was freshly showered and ready for the day dressed in his usual attire. He was wearing a similar jacket to Kisses but it was fully zipped up to his chest, leaving the top half of it open to reveal the fishnet shirt he had underneath. He had on a matching set of black shinobi pants with a nice shade of olive shinobi sandals. Walking back into his room he was about to exit into the main hall when he glanced back at his dresser, he stood in the doorway for a few minutes as he looked at the neatly folded Kanoa headband on his desk. The metal was still perfectly slashed out and the dated cloth looked clean, only sacred from age. With a heavy heart he went back and grabbed the headband and tied it securely over his head, he usually opted to leave the headband behind since it made no difference to wear it while training. But since he was returning to Kanoa it was a must to wear, even if it was a tad suspicious. Not that it mattered much, 
the second he took a step into fire country he was a target. After exiting his bedroom he made his way to the main hall, as he walked he took note of how quote the room looked. Usually Keyes was already up and starting training with Sasori while Naruto practiced his training with Isabu. But today seemed different, not a single soul resided in the cave and as he walked into the main hall he looked back at the table they all had occupied last night. He raised an eyebrow at the table, noticing a small slip of paper folded neatly in the circular table. Walking over he gripped the page between his fingers and flipped it open. Naruto, me and Keys are going out into the forest for some early training before you two leave today, I hope you don't mind. Also you know wanted me to tell you that he left something for you in the training hall. He left last night after you and Keys had gone to sleep. We will return before lunch. Sasori. Naruto quickly scanned over the note and threw it back on the table, he wasn't too surprised that Yuno had left so soon after telling him the information that he had promised so he didn't really care that he was gone. As long as Keys and Sasori were back then they would leave, just the mere thought of finally getting ready to leave back to Kanoa was getting him excited. Danzo would pay for what he had done to Shisui, he would pay. Naruto then made his way to the training hall, Sasori did mention a gift and he was slightly curious as to what Yuno would leave him, Yuno didn't seem like a gifty kind of guy so it must be something pretty important. As Naruto was walking he couldn't stop the adrenaline rush that coursed through his veins, the longer he walked the more he thought about just leaving Keys here and running off to Kanoa. It would ensure her safety and she could stay with Sasori, she still had a lot to learn and while he's finally killing Danzo she could become much stronger. Naruto thought about this hard last night too before he had drifted to sleep, Kiss's safety was still his number one priority, even more than Danzo's deaths. So if she could stay here it would just make things go much smoother. Pushing through the door into the training hall he took a step into the room and he froze. A sudden chill sparked down his spine. The room felt heavy, much heavier than it had ever felt before. It was like walking through a desert as he looked around the room, his eyes scanned carefully as the heavy feeling seemed to only grow with each passing second. The waterfall he had grown used to had stopped falling, and he silently missed the rhythmic sound as the room flooded into silence. Naruto, someone is here with us. I know, but I can't pinpoint their location. Naruto internally responded, it was faint, but he could definitely sense a faraway chakra center in the large room. The chakra felt as heavy as the room as it moved from place to place around the darkened training area. The chakra was potent and thick, and just from the glimpse he was sensing he could tell that it was the largest pool of chakra he had ever come across. Naruto thought about activating his Sharingan but quickly squashed that idea, it was still a secret and it would most likely catch whoever had snuck in here off guard. Then for a split second Naruto sensed it the moment he took a step forward, a massive force invaded his senses as he performed a quick shunching to get away. A loud bang rang through the cave making the stone around them shake from the force, Naruto struggled to gather his fitting from the man-made earthquake as he looked back to where he was standing. He felt his eyes go wide as he looked at the man who now stood in his place, his pitch black cloak swung in his gust as his leg embedded itself in the ground, physically caving itself into the stone as a crater now stood in place of the blonde boy. Naruto then saw it, the glowing red clouds that adorned the man's cloak as he turned to meet Naruto's eyes. The man's whitish blue skin glinted in the dark as his mirror white eyes gleamed with amusement, forcing his foot out of the stone ground he smirked at Naruto, his sharp teeth shining dangerously as what looked like gills flapped under his eyes. You are quite fast for a kid, color me impressed. The man said with a playful tint in his voice. Naruto felt his heart rate speed up at the man, he couldn't take his eyes off the flowing red clouds on his cloak. An Akatsuki member, what the hell are they doing here? Naruto thought, as he looked back up to the man's spiky black hair and the slashed out Kiri headband around his forehead. The man raised his shark-like eye at the blonde as he looked Naruto up and down. You're a missing nin from Kanoa. How interesting, he said, narrowing his eyes at the boy. Naruto didn't respond as he stood his ground across from the blue man. Naruto whatever you do, you cannot use my chakra. They should have no idea that I'm sealed in you. Naruto nodded, ignoring the man's words as he agreed with Isabu. Whatever the reason for the Akatsuki being here, it was no way related to him. None should know about his status as a Jinchuriki except Atarashi and Narumi, and she had kept that a secret for whatever reason that he was still uncertain on. 
Naruto straightened his posture as he flipped a kunai out of his pouch before glaring at the man. The shake-like man just grinned at the blonde in response. What are you doing here? Hamwell, me and my partner have been looking for Yuno for about a year and we finally have caught wind of him here, he said truthfully, there wasn't any need to lie about that after all. Naruto hid his surprise as best as he could, he had recalled Yuno saying that he had swooped in and took the Sanbi before the Akatsuki could get to him. So they were probably tailing him to get the tailed beast into their possession. Sorry to break it to you, but he's already long gone. Oh, that's too bad, then I guess you wouldn't mind telling me where he went. Either that or I kill you here and now. Naruto scowled at the threat as the man just grinned evilly. Naruto didn't even bother responding as he performed a quick shunshin appearing just to the left of the shark-like man aiming his kunai to his side. The man's grin just widened as he quickly turned his back to the blonde letting the Kwani come into contact with the large wrapped up sword on his back. Naruto smiled confidently as his blade made contact, his smile soon faded away as the sword he had hit swung upwards. A large mouth appearing from the front of it as it tried to attack the blonde. Naruto sunshine again, this time appearing just above the blue male as he sent a sweep kick downwards, the man saw this coming from a mile away and tilted his body backwards dodging the kick before sending his knee crashing into Naruto's stomach. The man looked somewhat surprised as the boy's body puffed away into a large ball of smoke, the smoke completely obscured his vision as he grabbed the hilt of his sword and brought it forward. With a single slice the smoke cleared away leaving the room empty again as Naruto stood perfectly still in his previous spot, the man grinned again. Sorry but Genjutsu doesn't work against me and Samehada, he said as the sword opened its mouth again and nodded. Naruto looked somewhat disgusted at the sword, he had never seen such a thing before and it was almost scarring. The name is Kissim Kid. Make sure you remember since I'm the one who's going to kill you. Kissim said as he grinned again he vanished completely. Naruto stood shocked for a moment at the man's speed, and didn't have enough time to block the knee that impacted his gut. Naruto gasped in pain but he tried to hold his ground, using the kunai he had taken out earlier he thrusted it deep into Kissim's leg. Kissim didn't even seem phased by the kunai entering his leg as he punched Naruto across the face sending him flying down the room. Naruto grunted as he flipped in the air and landed back into his feet, he looked over to see Kissim easily take the blade out of his leg and toss it across the room. A small layer of blood leaked down his leg as he ran a tongue over his sharp teeth. Naruto scowled before going through hand seals. Water style, shark attack. Naruto yelled as he took off running to the now desolate pond that the waterfall used to fall into. Two large sharks made of pure water formed and took off soaring towards Kissim. The blue man just laughed loudly as he grabbed Samehada tightly and brought the sword forward as he took the attack head on. Samehada opened his mouth and the water sharks receded back into nothing as the sword absorbed the attack. Naruto watched in surprise as the sword then grew several inches in size. Naruto scowled, performing another shunshin appearing to Kissim's left side, Kissim having seen the blonde just grinned and brought his arm upwards to block the kick sent his way. Naruto bent his body backwards until his hand reached the floor and he spun quickly around and smashed his opposite foot into Kissim's face. His foot connected to Kissim but it barely seemed to affect the man as he grabbed Naruto's foot and attempted to throw the blonde away, Naruto acted quickly as he formed a singular hand seal with his free hand. Blood style, blood pike. Kissim widened his eyes in surprise at the unknown jutsu as a sharp pain registered itself into his leg. He yelped as he looked down to his previously wounded leg, only to see a large skinny pike made of blood pierce his through his leg and go all the way through to the other side. He was so caught off guard that he didn't have enough time to dodge the blast of water the Naruto shot from his fingertip as it impacted with his chest and sent him flying back into the room. Kissim lost his grin and scowled as he got back to his feet, he quickly brought Samehada to his leg letting the sword eat away at the jutsu and blood at his leg. It had been a long time since he got actually mad at an opponent, and he surely didn't expect it to be some dumb brat. After his leg was blood free he gave chase, using his sword to swipe at the blonde's side. Naruto sidestepped the attack, sending another blast of water from his finger, Kissim just brought his sword around to absorb the attack as he rammed his shoulder into the boy. Naruto gasped again as he skidded backwards, using another shunshin Naruto blasted past Kissim, swiping a kunai towards his body but was intercepted by Kissim's larger sword. 
Samehada then grew again, swirling around Naruto's arm rapidly. Naruto tried to use his shunshin again but was too late and the sword took a bit into Naruto's stomach. Naruto yelped in pain and forcefully brought his feet upwards kicking the blade away and shunshining away. Standing just 20 feet from another Naruto flew through hand signs but quickly stopped as he watched Kisum's sword start to roar in what seemed like pain. The scaly blue sword started to grow in size again until it was about the size of Kisum now, the blade's tongue was stained red as it cackled again. Kisum himself didn't look too good, his white eyes were wide open in complete disbelief as he shakily looked back into Naruto's direction. Naruto was on edge as he kept his hand seal up, his chakra was already molded and was ready to attack but Kisum seemed to be acting strange. His sword was wailing loudly and now Naruto couldn't tell what kind of emotion the sword was feeling anymore. Samehada finally seemed to have calmed down a bit but the pressure that Naruto had felt when he first entered the room had returned full force. The air was suffocating, Kisum's potent chakra was starting to roll off his body as they continued to stare at each other. Inside of you, you're a Jinchuriki. Naruto felt his eyes widen, his mouth fell open in shock as Kisum grinned. Samehada flared widely as Naruto's throat went dry. Naruto tried to school his expression as he tried to think of anything he could say to Kisum, he was confused, he was shocked. Even Isabu's mind went blank at Kisum's words. Kisum's just gave a crazed smile, his sharp teeth glinting dangerously. Yes yes, Samehada recognized the taste of the Sanbi's chakra. Naruto felt his blood run cold as he looked down to his stomach, a part of his shirt had been ripped off from the sword biting him, his seal was still invisible but several teeth marks were etched into his skin. A bad feeling made its way into Naruto's body, this was bad, this was very very bad this wasn't at all how it was supposed to go. His mind was traveling a mile a minute as he tried to find an excuse that would work. Me, a Jinchuriki, please you sound crazy, you can't trick me, Samehada knows this chakra anywhere, he was the one who almost killed his previous Jinchuriki. Now it seems I don't need to find Yuno anymore. In that instant Kisum took off towards Naruto, Naruto barely had any time to react as Kisum brought his sword down in an overhead chop. Naruto managed to roll out of the way, sending another water blast from his fingertips towards Kisum. The shark-like man didn't even bother to use his sword to dodge the attack as he took the water jutsu head up, powering through as he thrusted his sword forward. Naruto was no match for the man's superior speed as the sword smacked against his face sending him billowing to the floor. Naruto's head snapped off the ground painfully as he felt the sword bite his stomach again this time. Naruto scowled, he had had enough with a burst of chakra he activated his Sharingan and quickly formed a hand sign, the blood from his new wound started to float upwards as it formed a shuriken and sent itself towards Kisum's hand that was holding the hilt of Samehada. Kisum jumped back avoiding the attack, taking Samehada with him as Naruto jumped back to his feet, the wounds in his stomach already healing thanks to his blood jutsu. Naruto, that sword, it had taken some of my chakra just now. They definitely know. Naruto cursed as he tightened his fist. He watched as Samehada grew a bit more in size. With a burst, Naruto raced off towards Kisum, aiming a punch to the man's head. Kisum brought his forearm to block the attack. Without hesitating Naruto sent another punch his way sticking to the same side forcing Kisum to duck out of harm's way. Kisum widened his eyes as he ducked down, barely having enough time to move his head out of the way from another blood shuriken. Using his momentum Kisum brought his elbow upwards into Naruto's gut. But much to his surprise Naruto managed to catch his elbow, with much more force this time Naruto bent his elbow back as Kisum stifled a scream of pain as he felt his elbow leave his socket as Naruto broke his arm with one swift motion. Kisum growled in annoyance as he brooted through the pain and brought his leg forward, sweeping Naruto's legs. Again much to his surprise Naruto managed to jump over his legs, flipping over and sending a downwards kick into the man's stomach. Kisum gasped in pain as he spit out globs of blood from his mouth. He didn't have time to react due to the pain and with a yell, Naruto formed a singular seal as the gobs of blood Kisum had just spit out formed into Senden and cut themselves deep into Kisum's shoulders. Kisum was angry, with a loud roar he brought Samehada forward, forcing Naruto to shunshin away. Kisum huffed irritably as he snapped his arm back into place, he was getting pissed now. Samehada quickly ate away at the blood in his wounds as Kisum performed a quick water jutsu. Water style, water dragon jutsu. Water style, 
water dragon jutsu. Both shinobi yelled simultaneously as two large identical dragons of water crashed into each other. Kissam scowled as the large beats collided in the air as a loud splash directed his attention to his left. Naruto jumped through the water with a crazed expression on his face, his Sharingan spinning widely as Kissam felt his eyes widen again. This was all the hesitation Naruto needed as the Kwani in his hand slipped past Kissam and dug itself deep into the man's chest. Naruto was shocked however as the second he cut deep into Kissam, the shark-like man bursted into electricity. Naruto screamed in pain as the electricity coursed through his body. It felt like he was getting stabbed with a million tiny needles as his body fell to the ground, he was covered in water thanks to the two water dragons so the electricity had no problem hitting every spot in his body. With his body trembling slightly he barely had time to roll to the side dodging another overhead chop courtesy of Kissam. Kissam had expected this however and quickly let go of Samehadder and flipped his body over and jumped down onto Naruto. Kissam's elbow almost broke through Naruto's skin as Naruto gasped in pain again. Naruto used another shunshin as he soared past Kissam, using his blood from his new injury and forming the familiar three-pronged spiral weapon. With a yell Naruto thrusted it towards Kissam, the shark-like man was prepared however and managed to roll back to Samehada just in time to meet the spiral blade head-on. Naruto, seeing his blood blade get absorbed, jumped backwards, forming a chain out of water that wrapped itself around Kissam's wrist, making him lose his balance. Using the opening, Naruto sunshine in close this time, forming a smaller blood blade and attempting to send it through Kissam. However, Same had to quickly bite the water chain around Kissam making the jutsu dissolve and giving Kissam enough time to duck out of the way of the oncoming blade. Kissam was still off balance thanks to his water chain, using his advantage he dissolved his own blood jutsu and landed a sharp punch to Kissam's injured arm, forcing Kissam's body buckled down in pain. Kissam however caught Naruto off guard, with his free arm he dropped Samehada and charged into Naruto sending them both down to the floor. Naruto scowled as Kissam sent a mean right hook to his cheek, blood flew from Naruto's mouth as he grinned. Kicking upwards he managed to jump away from Kissam, they locked eyes for a moment and Kissam felt himself growing more and more annoyed at the boy's smirk. He stayed silent however as he watched a thick trickle of blood fall down his Sharingan eye, then a Senban was flying his way. Kissam almost laughed at the pathetic throw, but the laugh that was coming alive quickly died in his throat as he found himself unable to move his eyes away from the blood Senban that was flying his way. He tried to snap his head towards the sound of Naruto but found it impossible to do so, and without a second thought he had a surging pain in the center of his body once again. He didn't try and fight back the sound of pain that pushed past his lips as he was finally able to look back at Naruto, he was breathing heavily as a large spear made out of blood found itself pierced through his body. Kissam's mouth exploded in blood as he took a step back in pain, he looked at the tired blonde in front of him. Naruto was trying to not let his fatigue show, he had used up almost the full 5 seconds of his misdirection and he was already low on chakra thanks to the amount of blood jutsu he had used in the fight. He was starting to feel the effects on his body as he barely had the energy to even be standing. He shut his Sharingan eye to conserve as much chakra as he could as he watched Kissam fall down on one knee. Naruto stayed still for a moment, staring at the hunched over body of Kissam with a sense of relief. He had done it, he had actually managed to kill a real Akatsuki member. This felt surreal for the blonde, he knew he had grown stronger but this destroyed any doubts he was having. Naruto breathed out a sigh as he held his sore stomach, he wondered if Kiz and Sasori were okay, hopefully they hadn't run into Kissam's partner. All his thoughts died in his mind as he felt a sharp pang run through his leg. He winced pain as he looked down to see the same had a latch itself onto his leg, he howled as the teeth sunk deeper into him making blood leak out from the wound. Naruto huffed as he tried to shake the sword off of him, and nothing had prepared him for what would have happened next. Kissam's hand reached forward grabbing a hold of Naruto's blonde spiky hair. Naruto looked on in shock as he was brought face to face with Kissam, the man growled evilly. Naruto felt himself gasp for air as the scaly blue sword tightened its grip around his neck. He tried his best to channel enough chakra to use a shunshin but found it impossible as the sharp teeth of Samehada once again plunged themselves deep into Naruto's stomach. N Naruto th this isn't good. Next time, try not to miss my heart. Kissam said, mocking Naruto as he slapped Naruto across the face. 
Same had a sunk its teeth deeper into Naruto's stomach making blood pull out of Naruto. Naruto found it impossible to even mold his chakra as Same had a stayed latched onto him, and the moment he had tried to channel Isabu's chakra Same had a sucked it out of him, making Isabu widen his lone eye in fear. You. Dot you broke my arm, you managed to piss off Same had a, piss me off. And you almost killed me, I don't even care who you are, or why you have a Sharingan, or how the Sanbi got sealed into you. But, Kissam said, letting go of the blonde hair as Same had a lifted Naruto upwards. Naruto tried his best to fight back but everything seemed futile since the sword was making it impossible to do so. His vision was beginning to get hazy, his eyes squinting to even look ahead of him to make out an even single shape or person. The only thing he could see was the imposing silhouette of Kissam as he stood across from him, looking down at Naruto like he was some sort of prey. All noise started to become a muffled mess as Same had a grip tighter around his neck. Naruto raised his hand to try and pry the sword away but the moment his hand came into contact with Samehada, he felt his chakra get sucked away even further. Naruto blinked as he could vaguely see Kissam reach into his pouch but couldn't see what he took out. Naruto couldn't even hear what Isabu was screaming anymore, everything had started to fade away from him as he gasped for just an ounce of oxygen. A silent scream forced itself from Naruto's mouth as he felt Kissam's hand slam itself into his lower midriff, he could now faintly hear the screams of Isabu as he felt his blue eyes start to roll themselves backwards. I guess for your punishment, you won't mind if I take that Bayou, would you? With Sasori, with a loud roar Sasori charged his puppet forward, the barrels of its arms spinning crazily as a large plum of fire soared out from arms and made their way to the Uchiha. Atachi kept his face impassive as he jumped away from the flames, dodging the insane heat of the attack. He was unprepared as the second he jumped away he was met face to face with a second puppet, whose mouth unhinged itself shooting out a large amount of senban trying to cut up the Uchiha. Atachi couldn't go anywhere as he felt the hundred needles pierce themselves into his body with a sickening squelching sound. Sasori didn't have time to relish in his victory as Atachi's body then started to break apart into several large crows and fly themselves towards him. Sasori reacting quickly, brought his first puppet his way, shielding himself from the crows as they pecked at him and his puppet ruthlessly. Sasori grimaced as he felt one of the blackbirds nick his shoulder, without warning he twitched his fingers again as his second puppet sprang to life again, the wooden creature looked to break in a large gust of air as a large dragon made of wind formed at his mouth and took off towards Sasori and the birds. With another twitch of his index finger, the dragon split apart as it reached Sasori, only to retake shape as it passed the redhead and forcefully swept up the crows and sent them flying off into a faraway tree. Sasori sensing something to his left brought the puppet to shield him from a swift kick from Ataki. Sasori scowled as the wood of his puppet started to crack from the power of Atachi's attack. Twitching again he pulled back on the strings making the first puppet saw itself backwards at Atachi. This time Atachi gave a small scowl as he jumped into the air to avoid the attack, sending an overhead kick to the puppet's head and smashing the wood beneath him to bits. Sasori clicked his tongue as he retreated backwards from the Uchiha, he never liked it when one of his creations broke. It had always felt like a part of him was breaking any time someone destroyed the wooden puppets. With a scowl his second puppet came flying next to him, easily towering over Sasori with its arm outstretched showing the two tubes to Atachi. The Uchiha just kicked away the broken puppet at his foot as he looked at Sasori, he wanted to raise an eyebrow at Sasori's fighting style. The puppet master had been much more aggressive than he usually was, he even initiated most of the attacks, something Sasori had never done before. Also he was using basic puppets, puppets that most Chunin in Sunagakur had purchased after being allowed access to the special store. It was strange, and Atachi for once couldn't put together his old friend's change of personality and ideals. You have changed Sasori. Sasori just scowled at Atachi, wrong, this is who I've always been. It's you guys that never bothered to look at anything else. Atachi moved slightly, expecting the puppet user to attack like he usually had. But much to the Uchiha's surprise no attack came. This time Atachi's brow did raise in a small amount of confusion, he didn't know what to think. Sasori was known for his mocking, for his superior tactics in the battlefield that overshadowed even veteran Shinobi. Then what was he doing? Sasori noticed a part of Atachi's mask crack the longer he tried to analyze him, his plan was working. 
The puppet master grinned as he barely noticed the small twitch of the Uchiha's arm. There it was. With a laugh Sasori sent his puppet flying towards Itachi. The Uchiha was more than ready to block the attack as the puppet grew closer to him but was surprised when the puppet's arms folded back to normal. Now keys. Itachi felt his eyes go wide slightly as a sharp pain ignited in his left leg. He winced from the random pain only to barely glance over to see the girl he had put under a genjutsu early to be standing tall, she was breathing heavy with her arm outstretched towards him. The pain in his leg only seemed to get words as the puppet produced a blade from its mouth and plunged it deep into Itachi's guts. Sasori noticing something was wrong forced his hand backwards, but it was too late. The body of Itachi then exploded, sending his puppet flying back into tiny bits and pieces back at Sasori. An exploding clone. Damn it. Sasori cursed to himself as he glared as the tall form of Itachi walked himself back to the two of them. Itachi masked his face as he moved his cloak open to see his now heavily bleeding leg. After he had switched places with his exploding clone he was shocked to see several kunai from his pouch had forcefully ripped free of their prison and dug themselves deep into his leg, courtesy of the young girl he didn't recognize. He was lucky she looked to be inexperienced because if she was stronger, then he might not even have this leg anymore. I see, you were buying time for the girl here. I should have seen this coming. Enough of this Itachi, you aren't going to leave here alive. And you definitely aren't getting keys or Naruto. Sasori growled and for the first time in the redhead's life, he watched as Itachi's Sharingan faded away from his eyes. Sasori couldn't even form thoughts as he watched the Dujutsu vanish, for the many years he had known the Uchiha missing nin he always, no matter what, had his Sharingan active. Itachi felt his pulse quicken slightly as the name of a familiar blonde boy reached his ears. A name he hadn't heard in a long time, close to years ever since he had abandoned Kanoa. Just then the face of an slightly older Uchiha flashed in his head, a head of messy black hair with a securely tied Kanoa headband around his forehead. And the most gentle and full of joy smile he had ever seen. Atachi you have to come and visit me and Naruto one day. The kid has so much fighting spirit and is so dedicated. And with my training he will no doubt be one of the strongest shinobi ever. Atachi blinked at the memory that had resurfaced. Shisui's words echoed in his mind like they had done years ago. Shisui almost every day would return back to the Uchiha compound with a smile on his face, and would then spend hours and hours bragging about Naruto. He never had said anything bad about the Namikas, in fact Shisui never had stopped talking about Naruto. Even when the two Uchiha would train together Shisui always found new things to teach Naruto and would break out into a huge smile. Atachi smiled slightly at the memory, Shisui cared more for Naruto than he had for the entire Uchiha clan, that much was plainly obvious. To this day Atachi was still unsure on what had happened to Shisui, he wasn't there during the night of the massacre and was slightly uncertain if the boy was dead or not. But Naruto was alive, and that was enough for Atachi. I see, Naruto is with you. He watched as the two in front of him tensed slightly. Keys growled as she took a confident step towards the taller Uchiha. If you want to get to Naru Ni then you'll have to get through me. Atachi looked a little amused at the girl's declaration but quickly hid the emotion. Atachi was still completely unsure about Sasori's change of heart, and Keys was a little interesting to him. She seemed to have the power to control metal, hence the kunai that he found in his legs just moments ago. The situation was confusing and brought up more questions than answers, and before he could continue his train of thought a large chakra signature became visible to the three shinobi in the clearing. Atachi looked up with a raised eyebrow as Kissim landed next to him, and his confusion only grew as he saw the state the shark-like man seemed to be in. Kissim scowled at Atachi's raised eyebrow and looked back at Sasori in a small amount of surprise. He didn't think the puppet boy would be here as well, he was about to greet the redhead when he was the injuries on both of his teammates. Quickly putting two and two together he went ahead to grab Samehada but was stopped when Itachi put a hand on his shoulder. Enough Kissim. We are done here. Itachi said, surprising everyone. Kissim was about to protest but Itachi's Sharingan flared back to life and glared darkly at Kissim. Kissim relucidly nodded but managed to put a grin on his face. His shark-like teeth glinted and ignored the blood that leaked down his chest, he didn't even bother to clean himself up after his fight with the boy. Very well Itachi, our mission is completed after all. Sasori felt his heart drop at the words, a worried expression took over his face. 
Itachi looked somewhat confused when Kissam grabbed onto his shoulder rather hard. Kissam reached into his pouch to reveal a small-sized urn that was seated comfortable in his palm. Sasori felt his blood run cold at the sight, pure dread washed over him and the wicked smirk across Kissam's face told the redhead all he needed to know. You ing bastard. Sasori screeched and sent his puppet flying towards the Akatsuki members, he didn't even hesitate as he shot out the largest fireball he could muster at the two. The ball of fire was so large that it had caught the wind and had got taken away into the forest. Sasori didn't even care as he watched the trees go up into flames and soon spread itself out engulfing the whole forest. The smoke had finally started to clear and Itachi and Kissam were nowhere to be found, their chakra signatures completely vanished and Sasori felt his blood boil in anger. While internally he was angry his face showed a heavy amount of worry as he cut connection to his puppet. Sasori wasted no time as he ran towards Keys and grabbed the confused girl by the shoulders. Keys was alarmed as she watched the fire spread quickly down the forest, trees were starting to turn to ash and she could start to see several wild animals starting to run away from the bright flames. She was scared when Sasori had gripped tightly onto her shoulders, the redhead's eyes looked to be glossed over slightly worrying Keys even further. Keys you have to get to Naruto. This is important. He yelled making Keys jump in surprise, her heart began to feel heavy as she grew more and more concerned. Naruni. No time keys. Here take these, I have to go and find Yuno and Atarashi and tell them about this right away. Sasori said frantically as he reached into his cloak and pulled out two identical black and red scrolls. He pushed them into the scared girl's hands and she fumbled to grab a hold of the scrolls. She held them tightly to her chest and jumped slightly once another explosion reached her ears. Both Keys and Sasori looked on in surprise as the mountain then exploded, sending rocks tumbling down and impacting onto the burning forest around them. Keys finally put together what was happening as a few tears started to leak out of her eyes. Sasori looked just as panicked as he grabbed the girl's face to look at her golden eyes. Whatever you do Keys, make sure he is okay. The red scroll is a healer puppet just in case you need it. The black is the strongest puppet I have made. Use it to keep you safe, he said and Keys frantically nodded, and without warning Keys took off back into the cabin making her way towards Naruto. Sasori wanted to go after Naruto as well, but he had to report this back to Atarashi as soon as possible. This was important, the fate of the world was now in the line and the second Sasori took a step forward he had to shield himself as a large dust cloud observed his vision from a tree that had just fallen over. Sasori grew more tense as several smaller chakra signatures became visible, snapping his head over to their general direction he scowled. It seemed Kumo had already caught wind of the forest fire and was starting to make their way towards it. With one last worried look back at the mountain he then vanished, traveling at near inhumane speed to make it to the Atarashi base. He just hoped everything was okay. Keys was running as fast as her legs could take as she sprinted down the cabin's secret hallway. Her heart was pounding, she felt like it was going to burst any second the longer it took her to reach Naruto. She was scared, no, she was absolutely terrified. She still wasn't entirely sure what had happened to Naruto, but she knew it was something bad. Sasori sensei looked mortified the second the blue man took out an urn and smirked. Keys had no idea what it was, but she was sure that Naruto was in trouble, she channeled as much chakra as she could into her feet to run faster the more she thought about Naruto in danger. Kiss's heart skipped a beat as she finally saw the door to the training hall of the base, she pushed past the wooden door tearing it off her hinges and sent it flying into the room. Keys didn't even care that her shoulder was now throbbing in pain as she looked on shocked in the room. She was forced to cover her eyes as another small explosion rocked the cavern, she lost her footing and fell to the ground as the cave started to shake. Once the shaking finally stopped she was able to look around the room, there was water almost everywhere as it soaked the ground. She saw several pools of blood scattered randomly and she followed the trail until her heart dropped down into her stomach. Fresh tears formed in her eyes as she gasped loudly, she tried to get to her feet but the second her foot moved forward she slipped in the puddle of water and fell face first onto the floor. She ignored the pain as she tried again, forcing her body forward as she slid past the pools of blood as her throat turned dry. More tears fell down her face as she finally made her way to the center of the room. Naruni. Keys yelled, 
her voice hoarse as she skidded across the floor only to see Naruto's body face down, his face slightly submerged in a small pool of water. His face was paler than a ghost as she reached out to him. She called his name again but got no response. Her whole body started to tremble as she yelled it again, once again getting no response as she grabbed his shoulders and tried to shake him awake. Ki sobbed his name again as she flipped him over onto his back, her eyes going wide as she looked at his heavily torn shirt revealing his now deathly pale skin. She traced over his stomach, her fingers softly going over the large bite gash that he now had on his right side of his stomach. Keys was freaking out, she ignored as part of the ceiling had caved in, falling down across the room and sending a small little shockwave across the room. Kiss's mind was running a mile a minute as she put her two index fingers under his jaw, at first she felt her heart almost exploded when she felt his pulse react to her touch. It was faint, so faint that she was afraid it was just her imagination. Making sure it was real she quickly unraveled the red scroll Sasori had given her and unsealed the small puppet that resided inside. The puppet was indeed small, about the size of keys as it wore a typical nurse's uniform. The strange thing about this puppet however was its face, it looked way more human than any of the other puppets that Keys had seen but she didn't worry about that now. She didn't even bother to connect her chakra strings to the nurse puppet as she ordered it to start to heal the blonde, the puppet's hands started to glow a light green color as they moved around the blonde's body. Keys watched in loud distress as Naruto remained unmoving, checking his pulse again just to make sure he was in fact alive, satisfied that she had felt it, she let go and let the puppet do its thing. She wiped her eyes clean, trying to rid herself of any more tears as a soft sound of footsteps reached her ears. A heavy sense of anxiety coursed through her as her head snapped back to the entrance of the cave. She cursed herself for not remembering to close the entrance in the fridge, she stood up on shaky legs as she turned to meet more than a dozen Kumo Shinobi who had just walked into the room. Keys put up her bravest face as she unsealed the black scroll in her hand, her hands were shaking and she felt her face crack slightly as the Kumo Shinobi started to laugh at seeing the girl look so terrified. The Shinobi in front walked forward, he looked like the leader of the pact as he grinned evilly at the young girl. His eyes glancing between her and the boy who was getting healed. Are you too responsible for this wildfire? Ki scarredly shook her head, it was partially true. It was technically only Sasori who had started the fire, she was only a spectator. The man huffed in annoyance as he looked around the destroyed cave, grinning again he shrugged his shoulders. Well you look pretty responsible. Keys felt her eyes widen in fear as she instinctively channeled her chakra into the scroll. The man stopped his walk forward as a large puff echoed itself into the clearing. The man in front took a hesitant step back as a towering figure floated over him. He took a hesitant step back in pure disbelief as fear laced itself into his veins. His group of shinobi had done the same, some even falling down in fear at the sight in front of them. The puppet that stood towering over them was large, easily taller than anyone in the room as dark purplish black hair stood spiky on all sides of his head. It was wearing a long white poncho with a midnight black shirt underneath that went all the way down to his wooden ankles. The puppet took in a sharp intake of breath before exhaling out, as he did so a thick black particle substance flowed freely from his mouth as she snapped her head upwards. Her golden eyes wiped of all fear and were now replaced with sheer confidence. Even using her magnet release, this puppet she could tell it was different than any other one she had ever controlled. Power felt like it was rolling off of her as the black substance leaked out of the puppet's mouth and started to circle around keys. She scowled darkly as she raised her hand forward, channeling much more chakra than necessary as the wood around the puppet started to change color, gone was the once nice brown wooden color, now a deep black replaced it. Keys heard a few screams of fear echo in the room and she didn't care, with a snap of her hand the puppet launched itself in the air. The black substance seemed to take form in hundreds of spikes as it rained down on the Kumo Shinobi. Screams of pain bounced off the cave walls as she watched the shinobu get ripped apart from her new puppet, blood flew from open wounds and mixed itself with the pools of water. Her voice was cold as she spoke, he eyes going void of any emotion as she felt herself almost become one with the puppet. With another twist of her finger the puppet above her swiped itself down, forming more spikes as it impaled several of the kumo shinobi, their screaming didn't even phase keys as she shut her hand tightly, as a loud muffled howl reached her ears. No one, and I mean no one, will harm Naruni. 
That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.